quick before we get started. Today's shout out goes to our friends at Beaver Bitcoin. BeaverBitcoin.com slash Trucker Josh is where Canadians can go to stack Bitcoin. It's a non custodial site, so you buy Bitcoin from them and they put it directly into your own personal wallet. Go check them out, the link is down below in the description below the video. Let's get back to it. So, good morning, everybody. We're in Kenora, Ontario, Canada. Actually, I'll put that up. Up here where it belongs. Put everything where it belongs. Put that up there so it doesn't fall on me. I'm already cleared to cross the border. I'm going to be crossing from Fort Francis, Ontario into International Falls, Minnesota. I want to Brainerd, Minnesota with this load. As soon as I get myself de-geared, get all my gear off, I'll be ready to go. I should get unloaded later this afternoon. And it looks like I've got a reload in Wisconsin. Appleton, Wisconsin. I gotta be there tomorrow, 8 a.m. So we don't have too much time to waste. Let's get going. Proceed to the highlighted route. weather here in Minnesota. We've got another hour to Brainerd. I had a reload in Wisconsin. Uh, that reload fell through. Haven't heard any word of anything new yet. So when I get there I'll send in a message, see what's going on, see what the good word is. That's too bad. I always wonder what happens like when a load falls through. It sounds like there's something that happened at the shipper. But I mean, but that's what happened at the Quebec shipper too, right? A few weeks ago. Sounds like something similar must have happened there. It's, I don't know, maybe it was just an excuse to cancel the load. But at least I hadn't made my way that direction yet, right? Whereas in Quebec, I had gotten to within five minutes of the place. And I did get paid for the, for the, truck not used so that was all right a bummer but at least I got paid for my time that day today it didn't really affect my day at all because I hadn't even started going there I haven't even gotten unloaded on this load yet very soon 
soon we're gonna see buds on these trees. This road here is just beautiful when it's summertime and everything's green and the sun's shining and the grass and the ditches is green. It's a nice run to have back and forth here. It's nice. It's close to home. But it is a lot of work tarping, untarping, tarping, untarping, tarping, untarping, and tarping again and untarping again. I'm kind of glad we're not going to Wisconsin. Whoa, 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 buddy, 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 buddy. Okay. I get it, you didn't see me coming, but you could have hit the gas a little harder there when you did see me. Still doing under the, okay, okay. Well, I'll let it go. Fully loaded truck, but I'll, I'll let it go. I'm kind of glad we're not going to Wisconsin. There's a winter storm advisory for when, the day when I'm filming this. I wasn't really looking forward to that. It was supposed to be over, like just the tail end of it by the time I got there and got loaded tomorrow. But it would still be very messy. Probably a lot of snow all over the place, probably slippery. I'd rather avoid that. I'm done with winter. I mean, if we never had another winter again, I'd be totally fine with that. Won't hear me complaining about it. I can live without snowmobiles, snowboarding and skiing. Well, the thing with snowboarding and skiing, I don't do that anyway. <laughs> and I don't live near the mountains. But even if I did, there would still be snow up in the mountains, you'd think. So you can go have your fun up there. But, you know, I do need to clarify it. We do need a lot of snow for Christmas Day and Christmas Eve. So if we could just get like four feet of snow on like Christmas week, just before Christmas so that, oh, here's a cop here. Look at that, sneaky, sneaky, not gonna catch me. If we can get it so that it's nice and clear and the roads are all cleared for a Christmas Eve, Christmas day, that would be perfect. And then right after Boxing Day, right after Christmas, it can all melt. If we could talk to our guys up in Alaska there with their weather control devices, if we could make that happen, that'd be great. Brainer, I haven't been here in what, like two weeks now? I missed you. Did you miss me? Come on, just a little bit. Just a little bit, come on. You missed me a little bit, right? Well, 
We've got our trailer unloaded. I got my tanks full of fuel. Got my GPS set back to Kenora. So it's been sort of up in the air what my reload will be. I'm going back to Kenora for another one. That's the final word. So we're headed back up there. We should be there tonight. Be ready for it. First thing in the morning, same thing as today. So we fueled up at Casey's here in Brainerd. It's actually more expensive here than back in Manitoba again. That fuel tax holiday back home has uh, been very nice. You know, they're drawing our business back home. But that fuel tax holiday is only there for the first quarter, or no, for one more quarter, so for three more months. Maybe they'll extend it, but uh, you know, eventually they're gonna have to bring their revenues back up, right? And put the gas tax back on there. But for now, it's, it is nice. So when possible, we'll be fueling back home in Manitoba until that uh, fuel tax goes back on, and then we will be fueling elsewhere again. Now, if only we could get our Manitoba premier to join all the other premiers across the country and oppose the federal carbon tax, we could get even more knocked off the fuel prices, which means even more knocked off of all the goods that you buy that are transported by truck. Because then we don't have to pay extra costs on our fuel. Pretty crazy the majority of premieres like 70 percent of provinces are against the federal carbon tax yet they still keep going forward with it oh there's a dog there oh someone's gonna go get him okay good yeah it's uh it's a big thing across the country right now. There's nationwide protests against it again because it went up by another 23%. It's just crippling business and it pushes all the business out of the country, right? You've heard me talk about it. All my business goes to the US because they don't have a carbon tax. So all that money that should be going into our economy up north just, just goes into the US economy, which is good because they're good friends of ours. So it's not like it's terrible, but you know, wouldn't it be nice if Spend money back home. You know, businesses back home would like that better, I'm sure, but no, it just drives business out of the country. Including mine. Give her, bud, give her. Not you. Not you. So we're going to cross from uh, Bodette, Minnesota into Rainy River, Ontario. There's no toll there.
Ontario. sun is back. It's the morning and uh, I'm here again. I've got a load. Got my brain bucket on so my brain doesn't fall out. Because it's tired. It might just fall out. It's early again. I'm just waking myself up. I'll be awake by the time we start loading. I'm just in line now. There's 10 guys in front of me. <laughs> yeah. 10. Hopefully it goes smooth and quick. I guess we'll see what happens. I gotta pick up this load. I'm in Kenora, Ontario. I gotta take this load down to Brainerd again. Another run down there. It's a nice little rounder. And uh, we probably won't make it there to unload this afternoon now. That's okay. I'll unload first thing tomorrow morning. We'll take it from there. You guys are having a good one. We're gonna continue this vlog on a little bit here as I wait to get loaded the following day here. It's hard to tell if my glasses are scratched or just dirty. They're really dirty right now. I don't touch them throughout the day. It's just it's amazing how dirty glasses can get. But they're also scuffed pretty bad. I don't know if you can mostly just dirt right this month oh in two weeks actually less than two weeks week and a half I have an eye appointment getting a new pair of glasses these ones got scuffed actually here when I was uh, tarping a load one of the tarp straps snapped or slipped and uh, it went around and came and dunk, bonked me right in the glasses that's why we have to wear glasses at places like this, right? Good thing it hit, it hit the glasses and not my eyeball, but it scuffed my my glasses now. So I think I'm gonna keep these as work glasses for places like this, so that if they get scuffed again, no big deal, but I can still see. And my new glasses, they're gonna be kept in a very special safe case and only cleaned with like these uh, special wipes that are designed for lenses and I have to be very very careful because even though people warned me about scratching my lenses these are my first pair of glasses I've ever had in my life I have I've never had glasses before this and everybody warned me to be very very careful not to scratch them so I thought I was being careful turns out I wasn't being careful enough these things are scratched like crazy That's, and it's all scratches for me cleaning them using the wrong things, using a microfiber towel. I thought that that would be good at first. Oh, it'll be fine, it's a soft microfiber towel. No, inside that microfiber towel are all the tiny little bits and grits and pieces of dirt and sand. You're just sandblasting or sanding your glasses. It's terrible. So, my next pair of glasses, I'll be a little bit more equipped in my head of how to take care of them from experience. That's, that's the way I have to learn everything, unfortunately. Seems that way. Going through life, I get tons of advice. I had great parents growing up who shared a lot of wisdom with me, a lot of great pointers of how to do things correctly, how, how not to do things. Most things I still have to learn myself. I'm, I'm just that kind of guy. I mean, until it happens to me, it just doesn't seem to stick. So thanks for hanging out with me here, everybody. I'm next in line to get loaded now. We're going to start tomorrow's video right here. I have to wrap this up. So it was a, a quick trip there and back. You can barely make it on your hours of service if you start here and then come back. But if you start there and go back, you can't make it there and back because hours of service are different in the US, right? So it's about six hours down, six hours back. So 12 hours of driving to do this route. But if you start in the US, come up to Canada and then run back down, you can only run 11 hours per day in US hours of service, but in Canadian hours of service, you can run 13. And as soon as you cross over the border from the US into Canada, Canadian hours of service takes over. So on US hours of service, you can't you can't make it, but on Canadian hours of service, if you end off in Canada, you can just barely make it. Does that make sense? Uh, that would take a whole nother video just to explain hours of service. I should do that sometime. I've been saying I'll, I bet I'd do that for like years now need to break it down for everybody just so that you guys understand hours of service and truckers and when we're allowed to drive 
when we have to stop. Things like that. I've got to wake myself up now though, it's time to get to work. I'll see you tomorrow, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, leave me a random comment down below, either related to the video or completely unrelated to the video. Surprise me. I look forward to hearing from you down below. I'll see you tomorrow.